1976 Rose Bowl game is brought to you by your Chrysler Plymouth dealers. We invite you to see Plymouth Volare, the new small car with the accent on comfort. By Goodyear, Goodyear tires and Goodyear service for more Goodyears in your car. By Texaco, we invite you to visit your independent Texaco retailer for quality gasoline and other fine automotive products. And by Transamerica Corporation. And we have the usual 106,000 here. It may be a bit chilly for Californians. Temperatures in the mid 50s, but it's an ideal day for football at that temperature anywhere in America. Kurt Gowdy, Al Dero Gattis, Happy New Year, everybody. Today, Ohio State going for the national championship that has barely eluded them the last three years. If they beat the UCLA Bruins, they've got it. For UCLA, big underdogs, a chance for a tremendous upset in Rose Bowl history. The two teams met earlier, Al, 41-20 this year, back in October 4th. Ohio State the winner. What is a rematch right now before we talk about the psychological rematch? Let's go down to the motorcade just entering the Rose Bowl Stadium. And of course, uh, coming in now, the Grand Marshal of the Rose Bowl this year, the Rose Bowl Parade, is Kate Smith. There she is. She's uh, quite a sports fan, big fan of the Philadelphia Flyers, and used to own part of a professional football team. And there's the Queen of the Rose Bowl, Queen Anne and uh, the Court of Honor. And in the background, the Ohio State alma mater. Right now, what about a psychological rematch? Whose favor is it? Well, I've got to give that psychological advantage, despite what some folks are saying. I give it to Ohio State. When you've won, you know you can win, Kurt. And the difference, I think, is interesting. One team, Ohio State, comes right at you. They use that eye, and they're always right uh, hitting you where you live. The other team, finesse, going down that line of scrimmage. It's going to be interesting to see this contrast de develop. I know one thing today, we won't have our cameras much off. Number 15, Shiver of UCLA, or number 7, Green of Ohio State. They're the quarterbacks. They, they are very tricky. They're great uh, ball handlers. They're either going to give, they're going to fake, they're going to keep, or they're going to pitch out. And you won't know what's going to happen. They don't know what's going to happen as they're instantaneously reading the defense as it unfolds before them. You're right. It's, it's an interesting read also because Archie Griffin is going to be reading that defense from that deep position in the eye, looking at where those defensive linemen are playing, as will John Shira going down the line of scrimmage. Well, we're going to have some outstanding players today. We're going to meet the seniors who are starting. And first of all, we're going to meet the seniors from the UCLA Bruins by their head coach, Dick Vermeil. We run the Veer offense at UCLA, an offense that has ranked third statistically in the United States this year and led by John Shire, our fine Veer option quarterback. John is, we think, one of the finer football players in the United States and has just done a tremendous job for us all year. He's come up with a big play both on the ground and in the air and has executed the option offense about as well as it can be executed. In front of Big John Shire is our offensive line, is a big physical offensive line, a very quick offensive line, led by our two fine offensive guards, Randy Cross and Phil McKinley. Our wide receivers are very skilled people with good, good quickness in uh, Norm Anderson uh, and Wally Henry. Our running backs, of course, with Wendell Tyler with a great speed and, and now a new uh, uh, record holder at UCLA. Uh, we think we have a very fine explosive offense. Defensively, we are led by Cliff Frazier. We play the Oki defense, uh, an odd defense, a defense that has matured as a team through the season and gained the experience to become, I hope, a good enough defense to play real sound football today. Our outside linebackers, uh, Dale Curry, has become a fine player along with uh, the secondary play of Oscar Edwards. I think uh, we have developed into a very fine, consistent defensive football team. Well, that was Dick Vermeil, his scouting report. Let's take a look at the other side, Al. Well, Curry, at the helm of every great football team is the driving force of one man, the head coach. And that head coach has been here many times, and we kind of think he's a winner. Woody Hayes. Yeah, the, the biggest thing we had going for us was our great offensive backfield of Arch Griffin, Cornelius Green, Brian Boschnagel, and Pete Johnson. We had them all back from last year. All four of them were great performers, are versatile, and we felt we could have an extremely versatile team because 
Uh, Arch is a great inside and outside runner. Pete's a great inside runner. And uh, Corny's a good outside runner. And Brian is a great pass receiver along with Lenny Willis. So we felt we we're going to be strong that way. But we had to rebuild our offensive line from scratch because we had only two starters from a year ago. But it came along very fast in spring practice. So what we did drill and work for was to have great diversity in our offense. And I think we've developed it this year because we can run, but also we can pass when the occasion is necessary. On defense, we had an even bigger job because we only had three starters from a year ago. So we had to put eight new men in there. And of course, we had our co-captains, uh, Timmy Fox and Kenny Kuhn, but we built around them pretty well. But these other men, for instance, uh, Ray Griffin went over to safety and played great football all year there. Uh, we had an All-American at our open side half back a year ago. Craig Cassidy went in there and played equally as well this year and led the Big Ten in interceptions. And it seemed as though each new man who went in there played as well or even better than the man who played that position a year before. And this great spirit we've had on defense as well as offense and the great leadership that our captains and our seniors have given us is the reason we've come so far. And we don't expect a stubber toe here now. And Woody Hayes means that. He talked about his backfield. Green at quarterback. Johnson at fullback, Griffin the tailback, Bashnagel at wingback. Many say this is one of the greatest college backfields of all time, position by position. Well, you know, Kurt, we were trying to think about the last time we might have seen all four, and I really can't go back. We go back to that great Army team, of course, with Glenn Davis and Doc Blanchard and Max Speedy. Uh, they were close to this team, but this team has size, it has speed, and above all, it has experience. How many people ever start in four Rose Bowl football games? How about a young coach, Dick Vermeil, 39, going against the old veteran? He was almost in awe of Woody yesterday at the luncheon. What do you, what do you think about a young coach against a veteran? Well, it's exciting. Uh, it's exciting for Dick Vermeil. I don't envy his position. I know this. He's a winner. And he showed us that yesterday. He's a classy man, and his players are class going to be exciting, but his players better be ready because he's not playing Woody. No, he's coached under some tremendous men. John Ralston at Stanford for four years back when Stanford came to the Rose Bowl and upset Ohio State and Michigan. And he's coached under George Allen. Tommy Pro, though, Chuck Knox. Not bad men to coach under. Not bad at all. And yet Woody Hayes knows that he uses every bit of psychology he can use. And we saw him, Kurt, for the first time giving his coaches a pep talk right before they went into the locker room. Very unusual. It's a ritual, Woody Hayes. He sends the players in then gathers his coaching staff around. He gets out some kind of a tape and measures the wind, talks strategy, and then psychs his own assistant coaches up. I think what he's doing is psyching himself up more than anyone. Yeah, I agree. And I think both coaches are concentrating on one thing, make very few mistakes. And I doubt whether we'll see that number of mistakes from Ohio State particularly. They've fumbled the ball only five times all year. They've taken the ball away from the opponents consistently. And I think what we have to watch for early in this game UCLA cannot get hit early and get hit hard early. If they do and get way behind, they're in deep trouble. I agree. John Shira said yesterday we must win the first quarter. All right. We've gotten the Ohio State and the UCLA viewpoints, and now we're going to be back and meet some of the players of this 76 Rose Bowl game. You are watching two automatic typewriters in action. Bruins. And the Ohio State Buckeyes to come out on the field. As we told you, the temperature is in the mid-50s. The breeze, I'd say, is from our left. Looks to be about a 10 or 12 mile an hour breeze. And there's the Ohio State band. UCLA will be across the way from us. The Ohio State rooting section right down below. They have about 10 or 12,000 here from uh, all over the Midwest. And we're waiting for the Bruins to come out. Here they are, representing the Pac-8, the UCLA Bruins. And now the Ohio State Buckeyes. Down to our right are coming on.
We're going to have the toss of the coin. They really get jumped up, don't they? The referee today will be Gene Calhoun. He's an attorney from Madison, Wisconsin. Jim Cheffers is the umpire. Whittier, California. He's the director of athletics at Los Angeles Unified School District. The headlines from Bob Dagenhart of Dayton, Ohio. He's the vice president of a heavy equipment company. The line judge is Frank Fiddler of Seattle, principal of Roosevelt High School there. The back judge, Don Hakes, South Holland, Illinois, a dean of students at Thornton Fractional North High School. And the field judge, Bill Fetty of Bellevue, Washington, a sales representative. The captains will be moving out, and you're going to hear the actual toss of the coin. John Shiro, the number 15. There's Woody. Cliff Frazier will be 76. Jeff Smith, 42, captain of the special teams. Ohio State will be represented by Archie Griffin, Ryan Bashnagel, Tim Fox, 10-2. And here it is. The referee's mic evidently is not working. Technical problems. Let's watch the toss. These four men of Ohio State have come to the Rose Bowl four years in a row. A real rarity of intercollegiate sports. They're waiting for that coin now. Now they're marching out to uh, the 50. In fact, uh, Al, there are seven men in this Ohio State team that are here for the fourth year in a row. You're right, and John Shira said yesterday, this is only his first time, and he wants to make it a good one. Referee, Mr. Gene Calhoun. Captain. Captain, you're Captain Fraser. Captain Shira, Shira. Captain Smith. All right, meet Captain Coons of Ohio State. Ca uh, Captain Bonamici, is that right, of Ohio State? Captain Bashnagel, Captain Fox. Captain Griffin. Let me introduce the officials for today's game, fellas. The back judge will be Don Hakes. Line judge Frank Fiddler. Head linesman Bob Dagenhart. Field judge Bill Fetty. And the umpire Jim Sheffers. For the day's game, UCLA, you are the visiting team. Who's going to call a toss for you? You're going to call it? All right, you're going to call a heads? The bicentennial coin, as you can see, that's the heads, that's the tails. I'll flip it and catch it in the air. He calls heads, and a tails it is. Ohio State, you've won the toss. You can take the football, and which goal do you want to defend? All right, turn around here. Come here a second. As captains of your team, you have responsibility for your players. Keep them under control. Good luck and Happy New Year. Go ahead. Nick Bonamici was also out there among those Ohio State players. Ohio State in the darker red jerseys will receive on your left. UCLA will kick off on your right. And kicking off for UCLA will be Brett White. We'll watch and see who Ohio State spreads out. They'll probably have Leonard Willis in the middle, number 89 deep. He'll be flanked to his left by Archie Griffin, 45, and to his right by Brian Bashnagel, number 48. One quick note, Kurt, with Ohio State receiving in the last game, for those of you who may not recall it, the first six times Ohio State had the football, they scored. The first time in that game, however, UCLA scored. So the opening series obviously important. We're way late getting into this kickoff. Woody Hayes still has his team. UCLA's out there, and the referee is trying to get Ohio State out of their final huddle. And here they come, breaking out. Number one, they say. They hope to wind up that uh, position when this game's over. UCLA hopes to come in here and knock them off. I'd hate to say this, Kurt, but this all might be contrived just to get the UCLA kids a bit more edgy. Red-white's waiting. Danny Willis is back at the goal line. Bash Nagel and Griffin are on the 10. 
And here we go, the 62nd Rose Bowl game. And the kick is to Willis on the five. He's to the, trying to get to the 15. Not much in return, he's ridden out of bounds in the 17 yard line. He's hit there by Lynn, the cornerback. So UCLA covered that kickoff very well. Anytime you hold a team within the 20, that's the objective of the coaches. Ohio State's ball now on their 17, first down. Their backfield will be Cornelius Green, number seven, a quarterback. The fullback will be Pete Johnson, number 33. The tailback will be Archie Griffin, 45. Bash Nagel to wing back, 48. Lenny Willis to split in, 89. Larry Kane, 85, is the tight end. Corny Green, the most valuable player of this game last year, the most valuable player of the Big Ten this year. First play from scrimmage. And he keeps the ball. Rips his way over his 20 and up to his 23 or 4 were Oscar Edwards of Riverside, California. Matty Marin drove him now. Just a comment. The opening series saw a different defense by UCLA. Rather than using their odd defense, they took their right linebacker inside, Terry Totalo, number 56, put him at the line of scrimmage. He made the tackle. Chris Ward's at left tackle for Ohio State. Smith's at left guard. Applegate at center. Error starting at right guard. Danley at right tackle. Second down five. Ohio State from their 22. Archie Griffin, a big hole, and he has a first down. Terry Tatulo, the inside linebacker, made the hit on him. Here's the key. Now they're in their odd. Frazier's head up on the middle. A double team on him. They try to get the fullback into Tatalo, the middle linebacker. In that time, they went to the three-man front with four linebackers. Our first first down of the game, Archie Griffin's been a starter for Ohio State since the third game of his freshman season. Harris now is at center. And there's Green on a bad toss. Looks like a possible UCLA recall. Ohio State's on it. UCLA had two shots on it. Who's got the ball here? UCLA had two men right there on a bad toss out by Green. And we nearly had our first big break here. We're going to see a little bit of a guessing game now. This UCLA defense is not going to show that one picture. They're going to show an odd man line. That's when Frazier, Clifford Frazier, 76, is on the nose. They'll show an even man line when number 56, Tatalo, goes to the line of scrimmage. The wide linebackers are going to pay that, play that pitch out, as you just saw when uh, Woody Green came down, Cornelius Green, rather, came down the line of scrimmage. Errors at center. Luke was at right guard for Ohio State. Second down, 14. Bash Nagel in motion. Green fading for the first throw of the game, and it is complete. If it's inbound. Great toss. He hits Lenny Willis to split in, and Smith took him up in the air. Lenny Willis, outstanding speed. He plays on a team that doesn't exactly get careless by throwing too much. No, they don't, but uh, this man led the Big Ten in completions, and every time he throws that football five times, he's been completing three of them. Ohio State, year before last, was a passing green that gave him the victory over USC. In a slot now, there goes Bash Nagel in motion around her 47 with a first down. And that's Griffin. Griffin just reaching the 50 yard line. Dale Curry, second on the UCLA team in tackles this year. A senior from San Mateo made the tackle. He'll play outside to the left. Pete Pele will be the left tackle. Frazier is the nose guard. The right tackle is Tui Asu Kupo. And the outside linebacker is Raymond Burke. Way to go, Curry. We were waiting first for Chuwi Asusopo. Dowd got it. I think you'll have a great game today now. We got through that first <laughs> Second down, seven. Herman Jones in a split end. Big hole. Man, what a hole there. Archie Griffin. Hit by Chuwi Asusopo from Long Beach, California, just a freshman. Only two times as a starter in his career has Archie Griffin failed to reach 100 yards in a game. An amazing record for the two-time Heisman Trophy winner. Ohio State has a first down now. They're on the UCLA 43-yard line. Willis back in the game and split in. This drive is carried from the Ohio State 17. 
lining up in their eye. Woody Hayes gave credit yesterday at the kickoff luncheon to John McKay. But many of the things we use, we have borrowed from McKay of USC. Griffin. I'll tell you that front line that, that Ayers and Danley and Lukers are just opening them up in there right now. And it's the secondary person and Schmidt who had to make the tackle. And uh, they look over to the yardsticks. No measurement. Be second down and maybe a short yard. Now, now they call for a measurement. Bring him in. And you know, when that safety man is making that tackle, you're in trouble. Now, what we like to do, and I think you might enjoy, is watch number 33 as we watch this. Just short. But number 33 is Pete Johnson. He's a junior. He is 240 pounds, and he is some kind of a blocker. So we might watch that man that leads Archie Griffin into the hole. Well, Archie already has 27 yards. He's carried the ball three and an eighth miles at Ohio State coming into this game. Now we have a new split in, in Greg Storr, number 80. He's another tight end. That gives him more blocking power. Second down to foot. They're in there. What Woody Hayes calls your robust team. The old full house team formation. They give the ball to Pete Johnson. He has the first down. Short yardage to him is just a breeze. He has scored 25 touchdowns this year. The all-time record for touchdowns in the year held by Lydell Mitchell, 29 of Penn State. Pele and Raymond Bell on the tackle. You have four linebackers. The two inside ones are Bell and Tatulo. The left corner is Barney Person. The right corner is Harold Harden, number two. Oscar Edwards and Pat Schmidt are the safety men. Lenny Willis checked back in. First down, Ohio State. Around the UCLA. 31-yard line, no score early, but UCLA took the opening kickoff and has had it since. There they go again. Pete Johnson, a straight handoff behind Wedge blocking. Tui Asasopo, number 40, made the hit. You know, when you watch a Woody Hayes coach team, it's, it's interesting because the safety men are playing run constantly, disdaining the pass, and it seems like such a temptation for Corny Green not to fake it and just drop back and toss it deep. Very deliberately, the Buckeyes are moving. They've had the ball five minutes now on this grinding march with one pass. They split out into a slot left. Something new here. There goes Archie in motion. They fake. Here goes Green with a quick feet of his. He's... What a runner this fellow is. Look at that. Took the whole UCLA team to bring him down. And sitting right next to me, fighting for Ohio State, is Rex Kern, their former All-American. He was just like Green. And this is the kind of man you have to have in this kind of an offense. Well, he sure makes it exciting. He can move in so many different directions. Lost some yardage here, but he moves well. He has about as pair of quickest feet as I've ever seen, Al. He sure does, Kerry. We're going to see him at some point in this game make some kind of an electrifying run. Now, this is a big play for the Bruins. Third and seven for Ohio State on the UCLA 28. Green, the Griffin, and a landing down on the 26-yard line. He's hit there by Frazier and Tui Asasopo. A two-yard gain. It's on the 26th of UCLA. And coming in now is Tom Claben, born in Czechoslovakia, senior. He's hit two out of seven field goals this year. Bash Nagel will hold. And the field goal will be from the 33, making it a 43-yard field goal attempt. Claben had that big field goal day against Michigan year before last. Bash Nagel spots it. The kick is up. It's got the distance. And the kick is good. A 43-yard field goal by Tom Flavin. And Ohio State's out in front. The score, Ohio State 3, UCLA nothing. UCLA now will receive. Ohio State has just shown you the best defense you can have. They had the ball six and a half minutes. After taking the opening kickoff, they went 57 yards with it before they were stopped and kicked the field goal. Spladaney will kick off from the near hash mark. 
trying to give UCLA less field to operate in. Wally Henry covering the near sideline. Jewel Thomas Barr and a kick deep. Oh, what a leg he has, that's the Danny. He leads the nation in punting the last few years. He is an outstanding athlete, could be playing regular, but he's such a great kicker that Woody Hayes doesn't want to get him risk uh, injured, so he won't let him play except for the punting duties. He averages 46, 47 yards a punt and kicks him high and very few returns against them. All right, UCLA moves to the attack for the first time from their own 20. Shira the quarterback. Tyler and Ayers are the running backs, and Henry is the flanker. Shira running. Devere gives the ball to number 30, Eddie Ayers. He doesn't get much. Norm Anderson will be the split end. He's 89. Don Pedersen is the tight end, 85. Pat Curto made that last tackle. Gus Coppins at left tackle. Phil McKinley at left guard. Mitch Kahn the center. Randy Cross the right guard. And Bob Kazarian is the right tackle. Second down, 10. UCLA. Right along their own 20-yard line. Ohio State leading 3 nothing. As he was hit, tried to pitch out and nearly made a disastrous play. Luckily, Wendell Tyler saved the pitch out on the rolling ball on the ground to him. One way to stop the veer is stop the quarterback. And the idea here is to get the quarterback. The man driving in does that. It's Aaron Brown. There we might, as we look at this deep perimeter of Ohio State, keep, keep our eye on number 43, Bruce Rule. He generally plays on the tight side of the field. Very quick, Beeman, Brown, and Bonamici, in the middle of that Ohio State line, are cat-like. Shire <laughs> now throwing the pass wide open and completes it to Wally Henry the flanker, but he's short of a first down. He's covered there by Craig Cassidy, whose father, Hopalong, was the Heisman Trophy winner in 1955. The ball will be on the UCLA 28-yard line, fourth and two, and they'll have to give the ball up. In punt formation, it'll be John Sullivan, who averaged 37.4 this year. The safety man is Tim Fox. You remember last year, Colsey. Neil Colsey, now starring with the Raiders, was their punt return man. Craig Cassidy's also back short. John Sullivan to do the punting. Flags go down. The kick, the driving spiral, handle on the 27 by Fox to the 30 of Ohio State, and out of bounds. We have flags down on the snap. Let's see what this is about. Dick Vermeil wants to await the official's call. And they're asking for the ball back. Offside against UCLA. And it has been declined by Ohio State. He started to ask for the ball back. So now while Ohio State gets ready to go to the attack, timeout the score, 3-0 Ohio State. The San Gabriel Mountains with 106,000 people here. This has to be one of the most beautiful views in sports, no matter where you are in the world. First down, Ohio State from their 34. Green handing off to the fullback, Pete Johnson. Straight ahead again to the nose guard, Cliff Frazier, and the safety man, Pat Schmidt, 88, made the tackle. As is always the case against Ohio State, that is the play you must stop. Cliff Frazier has the tough job. He's getting the double team. But oftentimes, that double team is driving Cliff right into the linebacker. And Frazier has just left the game. Now check that. He stays in, and Raymond Bell goes out. Brad Vassar has come in. A linebacker, second down three. Ohio State from their 41. And uh, we may have to delay a game there. Green's obviously calling an audible at the line of scrimmage. Pete Johnson carried. Now they bring the ball back. And we'll measure off the five yards. We'll go back to the Ohio State 36. They'll have a second down and 12. A legal delay of the game. Bernie Green pops him in. He was very proud to win the Most Valuable Player Award in the Big Ten when you consider 
And he plays in the same backfield with a Heisman Trophy winner, and the Archie Heis Griffin. And the Heisman Trophy winner said he deserves it. He said he's our quarterback and does the most things. Second down and 12. Bash Nagel in motion. Good receiver. Griffin turns that corner, slammed hard down at the 40-yard line of Ohio State by Dale Curry, who went from left to right to pursue. Third down coming now for the Buckeyes. They're on their 40. Here's a good opportunity, Kurt, to watch Oscar Edwards. He's number 21. It's a third down situation. The quarterback can go either way. Oscar is the hitter, number 21. They're out in a slot right. Lenny Willis and Bash Nagel are spread to the right. Third and four. Ohio State's ahead, 3-0, first period. Green will throw. Maybe there's a flag down, by the way. And Green runs it up to his 44. Very close to a first down hit by the nose guard, Cliff Frazier. But a flag was dropped. And Lenny Willis is signaling it's against UCLA. It is against UCLA. Offside. Now they'll talk to uh, Corny Green, see what they want to do. And the other captain, Brian Bashnagel. Bashnagel may be the best athlete on this team. He can do anything. He can catch, he can run. He's one of the fastest players on the team, an excellent blocker. He doesn't get the glory, the touchdowns of Griffin and Johnson, the yardage, but Woody Hay said he's one of the hardest working and most valuable men that he's ever coached. First down, Ohio State on their 46. They've had the ball about 95% of this game. They're leading 3 0. Just under five minutes remaining in the first period. Willis slips deep to the right. There goes back to the spread him out to the left. And the ball is given to Archie Griffin. Griffin slips away. He was hit at the 47 by Frazier, who rode along with him, and then Dale Kearney. Dale Curry finally put the hit on him, and the ball is spotted down at the Ohio State 49. Second down, seven for Ohio State. You know, so much of the keying that's being done by UCLA is a combination thing. They're keying both Pete Johnson and Archie Griffin. Now, they're looking at Pete when he's coming straight ahead, number 33. Second down, seven, Ohio State on its 49. Big hole open for Pete Johnson. That's the first man through in the option. If he takes it away from him, and Green has the option to either keep him or pitching out. All right, but they'll also carry on this play as we watch Pete Johnson. Archie Griffin, not in your picture, was taking a move to the outside. Linebackers go with him, and this opens up the middle for the big man. Good hole, good call. He'll be the only starter from this backfield back next year. He's a junior. Green, Griffin, and Bashnagel are seniors. First down, Ohio State on the UCLA 41. Using Bashnagel in motion. There's Johnson again, and he piled drives his way to the 35 of UCLA. Manu Tuiasiopo made the tackle. Listen, if you think I'm having trouble, how about the public address? <laughs> I didn't say a thing. I'm just sitting here. <laughs> no, really, again, we saw Archie Griffin going in motion to his left. The linebacker moves with him. Pete hits inside. Soon they're, gonna, five. soon they're going to give it to Bashnagel. Ohio State ahead, 3 nothing. Griffin, three yards, very strong from the waist up. You hit Archie Griffin high, he can break tackles easily. Tui Asiopo again on the play, along with Pete Pele, the left tackle. Just a freshman. Here's Manu. Lenny Willis has gone out of split in. They put the double tight end set up in now. Kane and Storr. Ohio State on the 33-yard line of UCLA with a third down and two. 2.34 to go in the first period. Ohio State ahead, 3-0. A robust tee. And he messed up on the handoff that time. Johnson trying to hit through. Both of them uh, together hit. Raymond Bell stopped him on the line of scrimmage. And let's see what Woody Hayes calls for now. It's still on the 33 of the Bruins. 
And it's fourth down and two. I have the feeling that Woody does not like to settle for a field goal, at least not the second time. He wants that score, the touchdown. They're going for it. Fourth and two. Now a whistle. And I think we have a timeout charge to UCLA. So they'll have two remaining in this half. Here comes Corny Green over to talk to his head coach, Woody Hayes. Now, so far in the first period, 41 yards rushing for Archie Griffin. A timeout with a score. Ohio State three, UCLA. Nine. All right, Ohio State coming up now with a fourth down and two on the UCLA 33. Ohio State ahead, three nothing. They have dominated the first period. The old straight tee. And Green on a rollout being changed. Throws. It's incomplete. Hit the turf. And I wonder if he went out of bounds. It was intended for Brian Bassnagel. UCLA stopped him. Big rush there by Bruce Davis. Marbury, Maryland, who put a tremendous rush on Corny Green. And Green's hard to rush with his quick feet. And they went to the deep and the heavy front. They put in additional line people. They wanted to stop the run, and that broke up the blocking pattern. Good well, move. a key hole here. Watch this rush here now. It's really two key holes, Kirk, and they stopped them for the early, earlier field goals, and they had to settle for that, and this time they take it away. Minute 46 to go in the first period. Shira quarterback. Shira keeps. Pitches out to Tyler, and Tyler's run out of bounds. Wendell Tyler set the all-time seasonal record for UCLA running back this year. 1,216 yards, average six and a half yards a carry. Notice his left arm. He has a fractured wrist. They just took the cast off. It is heavily taped for this game. A cracked left wrist. Pat Curdo and Bruce Rule made the stop. They are what they call the boundary men. They play the short side of the field defensively. Corny Green, the Ohio State quarterback. On the 36-yard line of UCLA, they have a second and seven. Straight ahead give to Eddie Ayers. UCLA really doesn't have a fullback type. They really have two halfbacks lined up behind Shire. Tyler weighs 184, Ayers weighs 185. They don't have a big hulking Pete Johnson at 245. Ed Thompson in the last tackle for the Buckeyes. Now they're talking to uh, part of the offensive team, or defensive team of UCLA. Don Pedersen, number 85, is a pretty good tight end. Doesn't have great speed, has good hands. Has fumbled though on occasion. Third down and five for UCLA. Here's a counter play. Shira is going to try and throw. Takes off on the run and he spills at the 39 yard line. Anytime you see him do that reverse pivot, it's a counter play. Aaron Brown made the hit. I watch him on his reverse now. He has excellent mobility. He moves almost as well as, as Green. Looking, he almost gets away here. Comes awfully close to breaking this one for a good yardage. So once again, UCLA will have to punt. John Sullivan for the punting and Tim Fox and Craig Cassidy back for uh, Ohio State. 30 seconds to go in the first period. Big rush on. It kicks away, a wobbly end over end boot. Gets a good bounce and it's out of bounds. So it doesn't come out all that badly for UCLA. They'll put the ball out on the 26 yard line of Ohio State. They're leading on a field goal. 43 yards by Clavin coming up next. The second and fourth ranked teams in the country as voted by the nation coaches. Oklahoma and Michigan will be meeting in Miami in the 1976 Orange Bowl. On NBC Sports, number one in live coverage of major sports events all year round. Ohio State on its 26th first down. The last 24 seconds of the first period. Green. Now, starts to run. Boy, I don't know how he got out of that mess. They pull him down to 31. Should have had him tackle behind the line of scrimmage. What instinct, though. That first move of Green's, if he had released the football, it was an interception and possibly a touchdown. He instantaneously pulled it down and ran and picked up about four yards. Second down, six. And there is the gun. And we have the end of the first period of the 1976 Rose Bowl game. The score is Ohio State 3 and UCLA nothing.
Kurt Gowdy and Aldi Rogatis as we enter the second period. The Buckeyes leading the UCLA Bruins 3 0. Second down, six for Ohio State on its 30 yard line. Ohio State's had 19 plays from scrimmage to six for UCLA. Green handing off to Archie Griffin, who was stopped by the nose guard, Cliff Frazier, number 76. And Griffin now has 44 yards rushing. He's a leading rusher. Ohio State has 90, 98 yards total offense. The UCLA's 14. This is a this is actually was an excellent first first quarter for UCLA. Statistically, they lost, but they did pretty well on the scoreboard, and they're holding them very well. 85. Larry Kane, good tight end for Ohio State. Good hand. Third down, four for Ohio State. Ash Nagel in motion. And they pile him up, go to the first down. Pete Johnson stacked up by Cliff Frazier and Raymond Bell. And Tui off the Sopo. And here's Sladaney, and now you're going to watch the premier punter in collegiate ranks. Tom Sladaney, averaging 47 yards a kick this year. He kicks him deep and he kicks him high. And they get very little yardage against him on punt return. Dankworth, number 19, and Severin Reese, number one, are back. This man is the finest punter in the history of Ohio State. He gets a low kickoff. Not a good one for him. On the 31-yard line, Dankworth has it. Being safe. Comes up to the 30. Still going. And down to the 34. He's hit there by Logan. Jeff Logan. Here's an end zone view of it. Showing some good footwork there again. Not bad field position. They have not as yet at UCLA have had any kind of real uh, workable field position. All right, Rick Walker's gone in the tight end. He's to the left. Anderson is split into the right. Shira down that line of scrimmage trying to work the ball. And there's a hit on Eddie Ayers by Aaron Brown, his sophomore. It is really cat like in there with Nick Bonamici, the junior right tackle. All three of these men, as we told you in the middle, Beeman 67, Brown 55, and Bonamici 75 have tr a tremendous potential. Their best days are ahead, probably. They're very good right now. They develop rapidly this year. Se uh, Severin Reese is out of the flanker. Wally Henry comes in, number eight. It is now second down 11. UCLA cannot move so far against Ohio State. Great drop back pass to the 35 yard line and down goes Rick Walker on his 35 maybe falling to his 36. Greg Cassidy quite a story played behind Neil Colsey three years famous father never gave up this year he finally got the shot and he's improved with each game he had eight interceptions Greg Cassidy probably Not easy to be the son of a famous father at the same school Probably the finest receiver, and maybe the man with the quickest speed is Wally Henry, number eight. This is a third down and eight for UCLA. They have to get something moving. Here's a deep bomb. It's well covered. Smothered all the way. Intended for Norm Anderson, and he was taken down the field by Rule and Griffin. Some of the UCLA fans thought he was held up going down the sideline. Ray Griffin, number 44 is Archie's brother and Duncan Griffin is a freshman 46 and there's a ninth grade player in Columbus Keith Griffin on and on they come punt formation again as John Sullivan Fox and Cassidy are back deep this is a beautiful catch facing Fox back to his eight gives the ball up on reverse to the 15 the 20 and down at the 24 is Ray Griffin. They really worked that reverse beautifully. Well, they brought it back from the eight and spotted down on the 23 of Ohio State. We'll take a timeout. There's your score in a tight one. Ohio State three. UC Ohio State's ball, its own 23 yard line, same backfield, Green, Griffin, Johnson, and Bashnagel. Ohio State leading 3 0, 11.55 to go in the first half. Willis with the split end. First man through, Pete Johnson. 
is hit by Cliff Frazier. Frazier, a senior, playing a very active game in that middle. He's backed up by Raymond Bell. Cliff Frazier has to stop the center, has to stop the double team, straighten up the center, pushes the guard back. The guard could not pull out as effectively as he'd like. That is about as well as you're going to do to bottle up that middle. Second down, five, Ohio State. 28-yard line. Line of scrimmage in their own territory. Bashnickel again going out. Here's Green on a keeper. Ooh, he nearly had his head torn off that time by Dale Curry, the outside linebacker, who made 96 tackles this year. Second on the UCLA squad. And uh, Corny Green's back in the huddle remembering that one. It is on the 31-yard line of Ohio State. They have a third and two. UCLA has not made a first down in this game. As we look at that uh, off defensive front rather of UCLA, probably more stress is placed on those four linebackers. Totalo in the middle has to play it very tough, as does Bell. Third and two. Johnson may have it. Frazier again on him. Players look to the far sideline to the yardsticks. And we're going to have a measurement. Gene Calhoun looks over there after he gets everybody unscrambled. Is he going to measure? He is. Bring him on, boys. He just joined us. We have only one score. That was a 43-yard field goal midway in the first period by Tom Slavin. Actually, uh, six and a half minutes were gone. Ohio State took the open kickoff, marched 57 yards, and a stop. First down, Ohio State. Since then, neither team has threatened. You know that game three months ago, the UCLA team admitted that they might have been a bit in awe of this Ohio State team. National champions, Rose Bowl three times in a row, but I tell you, they're not in awe of them today. Once again, Bashnagel in motion. Reverse pivot by Green. He's pitching out. And they get some yardage and they run outside that time to Archie Griffin. As he countered that time on the reverse pivot off the quarterback spot. Barney Person, the left corner, was a man that hit Archie Griffin. And a, it's a first down, Ohio State, on the Ohio State 44-yard line. 11 yards by Archie. And he's running right along now at a 5.5 flip for a carry. 10 carries, 55 yards. 10 minutes to play and a half. It's been a favorite for them today. Johnson over the 45 to the 47. Tui Asasopo, number 40, just a freshman from Long Beach, made the hit on him. I was hoping he wasn't going to be in the many tackles today, but I'll tell you, he's been outstanding. He has... He and Frazier and uh, Curry have made most of the tackle so far. Also on this side, Raymond Burks, number 87. He plays loose, as does Dale Curry on the far side. Like a down seven for the Buckeyes. Green on the keeper, now pitches out to Griffin trailing. And they're starting to pick up yardage on that option play. Pat Smith had to nail him there in UCLA territory. Uh, Rex Curran just whispers to me, that's a new play. That is the play that John Shira runs so well. They get that linebacker in the perfect option kind of a position. He doesn't know whether to go for the quarterback or go for the pitch man. So he goes for neither, and they gain. Who says Woody never changes? Woody changes. Changes game by game. First down. Wow, down to UCLA 38. This time Green's. Down the line, dances away to the 33-yard line of UCLA. And he's hit there by number 59, Pat Pele, the left tackle. They're using the old kiss formula, Kurt. Keep it simple, stupid. They're either going straight ahead or they're going wide. Nothing too un unusual, but yeah. very effective. That's right. They have now marched from their own 23-yard line to the UCLA 33. Ohio State's ahead, 3-0. They've had the ball. About 85, 90% of the time in this game. Oh. 
Flag down. They may have had a legal delay again. He may have taken too long on the signal count. They stopped the play. Let's see what UCLA will do with it. If it is against the penalty against Ohio State. Ayers is out now at center and Applegate's gone in. Applegate was scheduled to start. He didn't. They're talking to Dale Curry, number 83. We'll finally get a sign here. Five yard penalty. Legal shift. We know we Looks might like We didn't stop or something there. We might now again look at one of those linebackers. They may be anticipating pass. Totalo may be coming. Curry may be coming. One of them may blitz. Second down, ten. You saw those hand signals. That's a play being passed on to Corny Green. We'll take a look at that. They have a code of hand signals, arm signals. And Corny Green gets all the plays from the bench. Look at this rush on him. And he still unloads the ball and is knocked down by number 21, Oscar, Mr. Def Edwards, who wears a skull and crossbone towel draped in front of him. A flag has been dropped. They go into an even man line. Cliff Frazier moves to the left. There's Cliff barreling the right through. Chitalo went to the line of scrimmage. Good outside pursuit. And this came close to being intercepted. Shows you how amazing. There's uh, Oscar Edwards with his skull and crossbone towel. See it hanging down in front of his belt there. What he doesn't like to put the, put the football up when the opposition knows you have to put it up. I'm not sure how effectively Ohio State has used the draw, but they may decide to come with something like that. They also lost the down, as you saw on the signal. There's Mr. Death. There's his skull crossbow. <laughs> Third down. 23 yards to go. Big rush on him again. They're going to throw the screen. And hit immediately and down. Putting the knee down is Brian Bashnagel. He didn't have a chance. UCLA are just flattening their ears and blowing in there now. On the 45 yard line of Ohio State. First the time. UCLA throw defense out, getting a big hand. First time in eight years, I hear, they've used the screen. I think they don't use the screen that often. Dankworth and Reese are back of the double safety. Ladaney punted only 36 yards his first kick. He's been out kicked so far. This is unusual. Seven minutes to go. And a half, three nothing Ohio State. Here's a typical Ladaney punt. They called for the fair catch. And colleagues, they waved the arm instead of holding it upright. It's a touchback. Once that ball hits in the end zone, it's automatically a touchback. And we'll take a timeout with a score, Ohio State 3, UCLA nothing. Well, you'll have to give uh, those men in the middle a lot of credit at UCLA, and now they're pass rush because they've had the ball, UCLA, only 4 minutes and 24 seconds to 1936 for Ohio State. And UCLA does not have a first down, and the score is only 3 nothing. Ohio State has nine first downs. Shira to throw. Shoots it out. Crossing pattern. Intercepted. Intercepted by Bruce Rule, number 43. The pass is tennis for Norm Anderson. That is the first turnover of the game. The man on the other side is Cassidy. He made eight interceptions. Bruce Rule doesn't get that much thrown at him. But making this interception and giving Ohio State just excellent field position. Bruce Rule. Rule, number 43, the pass is tennis for Norm Anderson. That is the first turnover of the game. The man on the other side is Cassidy. He made eight interceptions. Bruce Rule doesn't get that much thrown at him. 
for making this interception and giving Ohio State just excellent field position. Bruce Rule, Southfield, Michigan, a junior. He plays the closed end of the field in the halfback position. Greg Cassidy, the wide open side. First down now, Ohio State on the UCLA 47. Green to Johnson. Johnson on a sort of a fierce slant, close to the 40-yard line of UCLA. First down yardage, Ohio State's average five yards on first down. UCLA, one half of a yard on first down. When a second and nine and a half to go, you're in trouble. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Kurt Gowdy and Aldi Rogatis back with you from the Rose Bowl. Hammering ahead again is Pete Johnson. They're going to him now a lot. Greg Storer, a tight end, has replaced Lenny Willis. Have a double tight end offense in. Get some extra blocking. Frazier made that last stop. And coming on now is Bruce Davis, 71 for UCLA. They're going to go with that heavy front again. They're going to go with a four-man front. This is where Cornelius Green is so valuable. He decides to keep. He's got that ability. Third down and a yard to go for Ohio State. He may have it. He was stopped at first, Pete Johnson. In that second extra, Terry Totolo made the hit on him. And what's this? Woody's out there. Woody Hayes. <laughs> Wanted a check, I guess. Or wide side of the football may have been a field. Fight. Wide side of the football field is to the top of your screen. Dale Curry, 83, has a big responsibility out there. Harris back in at center now. I think there was a little scramble and all that pile up, and Woody was going out to be the pacifier. Here's Green. Coming back again. This may be a big yardage play. I mean, he takes nothing into something all the time. He takes disaster in the triumph. For those feet of his. Here's the situation again where the wide linebacker makes such an excellent play. Now, Green knew there was nowhere to go. Curry had it cut off. The outside, the defensive end, Pele, had it cut off. Here's where he shows his mobility. The most dangerous, perhaps the most dangerous man they've got. Gained 473 yards on the ground this year, ran for eight touchdowns, passed for six, first down Ohio State on the UCLA 21. Three to nothing, Ohio State ahead. And the pitch off just in time, a bubble, and UCLA Barney Green lost the ball. After some very clever Ball handling, they lose it over, and they're going to give it to UCLA. Again, they stopped an Ohio State drive. Cliff Frazier on the ball. Last time they had the football, as we take another look at this, they go for the dive man first. That was the end coming into the inside. Indecision. He did not see that man come, and he got caught. Comment I was going to make, UCLA. Last time they had the football, Shira went up top. Bruce Rule intercepted. This time, he'll probably keep it on the ground. We have five minutes, seven seconds and a half, three nothing, Ohio State. Economy with comfort. Now you can find both in a new kind of small American wagon, Volare. Your mileage may differ, but according to EPA estimates, a six-cylinder wagon with manual transmission got 30 miles per gallon on the highway. 18 in the city. Plymouth Volare, the new small wagon with the accent on comfort and economy. Someday, about 2,200 pounds from now and half a dozen feet taller, this little fella might follow the hoofsteps of his father, a member of the Big Hitch, the team of champion Clydesdales that symbolize the king of beers, symbolize a tradition, 
A promise, a dedication that can be summed up in one word, pride. Maybe that's why when you say Budweiser, you've said it all. UCLA has three yards rushing so far in the first half. And they've been trying to pass lately. The last one was intercepted. Shira. Great die tackle playoff to Wendell Tyler. And the Bruin just can't budge that front line. Bonamici, 75. Brown, 55. It's on the 18-yard line of UCLA. Second down, nine. UCLA, 15-point underdogs. Has had a fighting defensive club on that field. It held Ohio State to three points in the first half. And though Tyler, he's their running hope. And here's Shira pitching out. And he is landing. Ray Griffith comes up to hit Tyler. You think Ohio State's good on offense. How about their defensive club? Cat-like. Boy, they're quick. Tyler's problem, they say, is he fumbles. Well, he didn't fumble here, and he got hit pretty well. This man has been averaging 6.5 every time he's carried the football. So far, he hasn't carried that much. There's Ray. I guess all the Griffins play well. Third down. Nine to go. UCLA still not, does not have a first down in this game. Ohio State ahead, 3-0 on the 18-yard line. Shira fading. Foster, he's got it there. And there's the first first down. Don Pedersen, the tight end. He was hit by Ray Griffin. First first down for UCLA. What a pretty play, too. It was a little crossing pattern. The man gets into the zone, clears his linebacker. Shira, though only 5'10", his line did such an effective job of blocking. Drills it right in there. Good, good pass. He had combined 1,900 yards this year, 1,100 passing, 800 rushing, and he had just under 50% of passing. Everybody thinks of him as strictly a running quarterback, but he can throw, too. First down for the Bruins. There they go on the dive tackle play off the beer, Eddie Ayers. That's just a straight handoff. They double team, and uh, the halfback just dives straight ahead. The old dive tackle play off the split tee out. The old dive tackle play. You're right, Kurt. That's such a tough thing to, to realize that quarterback is reading. Now he can put it in there or pull it back. The man we haven't seen them really work with, I think could be exciting, is number eight, and that's Wally Henry. All right, they're spreading him to the left. And Norm Anderson to the right on second down six. Three nothing, Ohio State. There's a pass out and complete the pedal from the tight end. He's got it for a first down. At the UCLA 49-yard line, Tim Fox, the safety man, hit him right after he caught the ball. Good throw, fine running catch by the tight end. First down, two in a row for UCLA. They're on their 49. They have two minutes and a half to go in the first half. And they're moving Ohio State now in the air. In a slot right formation. Shira giving to Wendell Tyler. And he goes to the Ohio State 48-yard line where the boundary side linebacker Ken Kuhn got him and Pat Curdo the left end. Nick Vermeil looking out. Woody Hayes looks up at the clock. Randy Cross is hurt. Their outstanding right guard who can also play center. He's an excellent pulling guard. And if he is injured and uh, has to be taken out, it could hurt the UCLA attack. UCLA and the Ohio State, 48-yard line. This is the first time that UCLA has been in Ohio State territory today. We have two minutes and four seconds to go in this first half. Randy Cross, senior. Isn't that a view? You did comment, Kurt, about how they flipped this defense, and we'll get to that in a second. Cross limping out. We'll take a timeout with a score. Ohio State three, UCLA nothing. 
A junior, Keith Eck, E-C-K, replaced the injured Randy Cross at right guard. First downs, Ohio State 11, UCLA 2. Archie Griffin looking on, the shot will hit. That's the first sack for Ohio State. And storming in there is Eddie Beeman, the left tackle, number 67. And that puts the ball back on the UCLA 44. Those three inside men have all excellent speed and good foot movement, strong up top. And if you're going to rush a passer, you need good upper body strength. Well, now it's third down and 15. UCLA coming out in their 44. Putting uh, the slot right formation at the Buckeyes. Shire again with a blitz. Dancing. Goes to the 40. 45. He's hit from behind and brought down on the 49-yard line of UCLA by Bob Rudzinski, number 84, the junior right end. And Shiver showed you some nifty maneuvering against the Pat Rush. They, they were putting a blitz on him that time. You know, going against the most awesome offense in uh, collegiate football in Ohio State, over 400 yards total offense a game and 34 point average a game it's not a bad first half for the Bruins of UCLA right they're the top scoring team in the country Ohio State 34 points a game and right now it appears that Aaron Brown the middle guard the sophomore is injured for Ohio State with 46 seconds to go in the half Sunday will be in Pittsburgh the Oakland Raiders and Pittsburgh Steelers for the American Football Conference Championship the four during and following the game Grandstand will be seen, including the sixth game of the World Series, some of 75's exciting moments. John Brody will have an analysis of Pittsburgh and Oakland, plus key highlights of the AFC playoff game. Also, a special Gallup sports opinion to poll on the instant replay, aiding official decisions on controversial plays. I'll give my own opinion. I'm against it. Too many numbers and too many computers in America now. On the 49-yard line of UCLA, they have a fourth down. It'll be the fourth punt for UCLA. Mark Lang replaced Aaron Brown as middle guard for Ohio State. Lang's a sophomore from Cincinnati. High snap. He got it away. Another nice kick, a floater. And it is bounding around and down on the Ohio State two-yard line. But only 30 seconds to go. Well, they say the half. kicking game, Kurt, wins football games, and that's one of the reasons. By the way, the fellow with the uh, yellow shirt on the far side that you keep seeing isn't one of the students. That is Dick Vermeil. He looks awfully young. Watch this, Bob. 49-yard punt, Al. The last time he punted, 56 yards. I guess he's John inspired Paul. by Spadini. Arnie Green comes on, and... Uh, Here's the instructions, of course. Don't lose that ball down there. You'll have Kane in store, and they're a tight end. Three nothing to score, Ohio State. They spotted that punt on their four yard line. They're in their full house backfield. Right ahead they go. They give the ball to Pete Johnson. 20, the clock moving. UCLA has two timeouts left. Ohio State three. But evidently, uh, that may be the last play of the first half. As we're running down at 10 seconds and a half now. And Woody Hayes, a 15-point favorite in this game, is going to leave the field just three points ahead of a battling UCLA ball club today. There it is. That's the end of the first half of the 62nd Rose Bowl game. The score is Ohio State 3, UCLA nothing. Kawasaki lets the good times roll. Kawasaki lets the good times roll. Get aboard, get away, and you're going to say, let the good times roll. How much do you think an oil company makes on every dollar? 20? 
30, 60 cents? According to a national survey, most people say 60 cents. At Texaco, in the first nine months of 75, we made only about three cents on every dollar. That's an average of only a penny a gallon for all petroleum and products we sold. Where does the penny go? For dividends, repayment of debts, and mostly it goes back to work to help get you the oil and gasoline you need. We'll have halftime activities in just a moment. Right now, we pause for station identification. Sanford and Son, followed by Chico and the Man, Friday night on NBC.